working with uh, with Woody Guthrie, uh, well, with Woody Guthrie archive, uh, looking at the songs that he wrote, I, I came to realise that Woody never wrote a cynical song in his life. Every song he wrote was about lifting people up. I don't know where Bob Dylan got the impulse from, but it wasn't from Woody Guthrie. So. <laughs> He never wrote a cynical song in his life, and, and since working with the archive, uh, uh, I've kind of come to the conclusion that the enemy of all of us who want to make the world a better place is not actually capitalism or conservatism, it's actually cynicism. Yeah. Is our really our greatest enemy. <laughs> While the cynicism of the Fox News Network is rather annoying, <laughs> At least we see it for what it is. The cynicism that really damages uh, our, our um, urge to make the world a better place is, of course, our own cynicism. Our own sense that it's not worth it. Our own sense that it makes no difference. Our own sense that, you know, history is against us. Fox News and their friends rely on us feeling like that, which is why they drip cynicism into the national debate about things in the hope we'll feel that way but we all you know we all of us who are in any way engaged in the political process even if it's just in an emotional way find times when we want to scream at the telly and think what's the bloody point i speak from experience as someone who helped to get tony blair elected you know and we know how that turned out but something else turned out as well you know when we all got teed off with it and all were like you know well whatever what's the bloody point what happened the Tories came back. Now they're in now. Now they're trying to take apart our free healthcare system. Now perhaps if we'd have paid a bit more attention and not sat on the fence, uh, we, you know, things wouldn't have been so bad. So, you know, I, I hear there's going to be an election sometime this year. <laughs> and uh, it's not my job to tell people how to vote, but let me just say that, you know, I remember <laughs> The previous administration were like, and uh, although although it's frustrating, the things that have not been achieved and the, and the, the hopes that you had, it's, what happens if you run on a message of hope? I guess things happen. But while the Democrats are there, we all of us live in a world of possibilities, and not all of those possibilities will be realised. But in order for them to be realised, it needs people to keep encouraging them to their better angels, even if you have to do that with the toe of your Dr. Martin boot. <laughs> it's, when you, it's when you turn away. It's when you turn away and think, I can't, you know, I don't, you know, I don't really care anymore. I'm so pissed off with my, I don't really care anymore. That's when the other lot come, come sneaking back in again. So that's the cynicism I'm talking about. And I had to explain to someone last night, I'm not talking about doubt. Doubt is perhaps the most human uh, of emotions. And never, ever, never, young people, <laughs> with your feet on my stage. <laughs> what do you think you are, huh? <laughs> and, no wonder, that's what you should have said, mate. What about him? <laughs> Sorry, only joking, only joking, it's fine. You're not in church here, so. Um, yeah. Um, you know, never trust anyone who has no doubts whatsoever because they're either a Trotskyist or some kind of religious fundamentalist nutcase. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not talking about scepticism either. Scepticism is healthy. Being sceptical about, you know, what politicians can achieve, that's healthy. I'm talking about cynicism. A cynic is somebody who has given up and wants you to give up because it makes them feel better as well. That's what I'm talking about. People who disengage. And that's what, uh, and particularly, there's so much cynicism now, it, the internet seems to open the trapdoor to, to cynicism. There's some really awful stuff out there. Um, you know, if I express an opinion on the internet, some of the stuff that comes back from Twitter is, uh, frankly, you know, has nothing to do with political debate whatsoever. I shrug it off. I mean, I would repeat some of it if it weren't for these two here, but... Um, okay, madam, are you... Really? Okay. Their mother says they've, they've heard it. Well, I just, I'll just say this. I'll just say this. The truest tweet, the most powerful tweet, the most both amazing and shocking tweet I ever received was this one about 18 months ago. It said this. <clears throat> I'll spell it out just in case we can get away with it. A 
Because I'd be embarrassed, even if you aren't, Mrs. Um, <laughs> it said this, the tweet said this. The great thing about Twitter is all your life you think Billy Bragg is a see you next Tuesday. And now you can tell him. <laughs> pretty good, huh? That's pretty good. And I, you know, to me, that's a, I can laugh it off and I make it as part of the show, you know? It's in there and we laugh about it. But if I was a 20-year-old Billy Bragg, first starting out, making my first, you know, political ideas out there, trying to frame my way of looking at the world, and every time I stuck my head over the parapet, I got that kind of sort of stuff fired at me. You know, I would go, well, you know, I'd think to myself, well, maybe I should try American Idol then. Might, that might be <laughs> And have no doubt, have no doubt, were I a young woman with an opinion, the kind of abuse I get will be ten times worse. Will be ten times worse. So I think we have to, you know, we have to take responsibility for this, those of us who use the internet. This is not something the government can police. You know, this is something we have to take responsibility to make sure that people understand that freedom of speech gives you the right to express an opinion. It doesn't give you the right to abuse people. And it's really important that, that, that we understand that. And we, that because, you know, too many people uh, equate freedom on the internet with impunity. They are not the same thing. They are definitely not the same thing. So, um, I've written my anti-cynicism campaign song, which I want to sing for you now. And it has a whistling solo in it, in the centre of it. But, um, it's, as we're in America, I, I'm duty-bound to say that it's ironic whistling solo. I don't want you to take it seriously, okay? Americans famously struggle with irony. I know Alanis Morissette is a Canadian, but... <laughs> I'm laughing now. Some nights my whistle doesn't turn up and it's just me going... <sighs> Which is okay unless you're sitting in the front row and you feel it on your neck. <laughs> Mate, you not know you love. I'm talking about you. Yeah, that's it, right? You're good there, you're good. You're good. It's called cool. Tomorrow is gonna be a better day. <laughs> Misanthropic, misbegotten merchants who flew, who look into their crystal balls and prophesy our doom that the death knell will chime. It's the end of time. Let the cynics put their blinkers on and toast our decline. Don't become demoralized by this chorus of complaint. It's a sure sign that the old world is terminally quaint And tomorrow's gonna be a better day No matter what the siren voices say Tomorrow's gonna be a better day We're gonna make it that way Did you have the irony button pressed? It didn't sound as ironic as usual. To the pessimistic populists who harbor no down that every day we make our way to hell in a handcart and the snarky said We'll snipe him to get anyone who sticks their head above the parapet. Oh, don't be disheartened, baby. Don't be fooled. Take it from someone who knows the glass is half full and tomorrow's gonna be a better day. No matter what the siren voices say. 